then of course i want to move on to this news this was all over my piece of social media because i follow people who are you know balls deep in the nightlife scene and whatnot and partake in electronic music like i do and this is featuring this headline courtesy of mixmag it says the following london night czar amy lammy received a 40 percent pay rise amid the capitals club closure amy bloody lammy the london night czar here in my hometown london got a 40 percent pay rise a 40 percent pay increase to be very precise in language despite her being absolutely terrible at her job despite her having no real you know demonstra no real demonstrable um despite having no real evidence of any success of any long-standing changes um that have really kind of been implemented since she's been hired in this role i think since 2016 or 2017 whatever it may be and if anything just a real waste of space and for one, I want to start this off before reading the article. I really want to know if people out there are way more educated than I am when it comes to politics. Is this Amy Lammy job as a night czar? Is this a permanent job? Is this one of those MP jobs where like, is this like being an MP where it's like a job for life? Or can she ever be voted out? Or is this intrinsically tied to Sadiq Khan's um, London mayorship, which doesn't seem to be ever over as well. That just seems to be rumbling on and on and on. I wish we had term limits when it comes to that sort of stuff. I don't know if it just keeps getting voted in or what's not. Again, I don't really pay much attention to politics, but I would like to know, is Amy Lammy's job a job for life? And if not, can she ever get voted out or fired? Like, what is the deal here? I just want to see a fresh face. And again, don't even imagine she did a good job. Even if she did a good job being a London Light Czar and she has to advocate for some really interesting um, new, you know, um, regulations and stipulations and whatnot and initiatives for clubs and dance music in general. And she worked hand in hand with clubs to kind of find a way to kind of mend the relationship between local councils. And she did amazing things. Don't get me wrong. Imagine she did all that. I will still want to see somebody new just to offer a fresh and interesting take um on what's going on here in london because i feel like the issues in london although they're the same they keep changing in some way shape or form so you maybe need some clever approaches to kind of rectify some of these issues um again to you know to kind of pull a hand out there um to mend some relationships to build some bridges um to maybe establish communication just a fresh interesting voice would maybe add to it and she's had long enough in the hot seat get somebody else in to do it that's all i ask and again it's just, if it's a job for life it's a piss take hopefully it's not and it's just a temporary one because i don't think she's done a good enough job to even have a job in the first place let alone deserve a pay rise so it continues here this is um first reported by the spectator her salary has risen from eighty three thousand one hundred and sixty nine pounds a year pro rata to one hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred and twenty five as a result of two pay bumps one in september 2021 following a review of her role and another in 20 22 in april which came as part of great london authority gle annual salary increase okay so the one salary increase that she did get was based on her performance so they looked at her performance in 2021 and said yep you've done a good enough job we're going to give you a bump and the other one was in line with what everybody was getting in the gla which is greater london's authority's annual pay increase fair enough the funny thing about this eighty-three thousand that she was first on this was a pro rata salary that she was getting for working part-time if I'm not mistaken, I think the first two years or maybe one year of her role as Nine London Night Czar, she was getting paid £83,000 to work part time in London as a Night Czar, which is essentially what she's doing, like sitting in local meetings, um, in some council meetings from time to time and what? And saying what? Like introducing herself and saying key buzzwords and whatnot. Like what has she actually done? Like legitimately, what has she actually done? You hear a lot of this stuff about this flipping 24-hour London nonsense. We've got a 24-hour tube. But what is the point of having a 24-hour tube if there's not one 24-hour club in London? Not even that. Forget that. I've, I've, I've said from the very beginning, I think for sure, for sure, London by bare minimum, at bare minimum, should have one fold in each part of London. North, east, south, and west. There should be at least one. And when I mean one, I mean what Fold was originally sold to us as. When Fold originally launched, you can look at some of the old articles, just Google them. You'll see a lot of the initial articles about Fold was that it was going to be London's first, yeah, London's first 24-hour club. Obviously, that didn't transpire because of local issues, probably council issues, noise, permits, licenses, who knows. There was a time and period when the Fold founders were arrested slightly because of some fraud, you know, cyber crime thing because of some equipment that was bought with some illegal funds, blah, blah, blah. So there's been issues there. So maybe that was the reason why. 
But that was the reason why it initially launched, and that was kind of what his main selling point was. But obviously, that hasn't happened, and you know they have some twenty-five licenses that they dot around the year. It's not many. I think it might be six, maybe less than that. I'm not too sure. But regardless, Fold should be open twenty-four hours more often than six times a year. It should be open twenty-four hours every year every weekend to be honest in my opinion there's no point in having a space like that and having it where it is situated in the middle of a warehouse in the middle of nowhere basically not near to any real neighbors or not and anything they've got a good crowd management in terms of getting people away from their area so they're not loitering around the place good transport connections there's no reason why that place shouldn't be open 24 hours but it isn't so the fact that they kind of keep rabbiting on about this 24-hour flip in London and whatnot because the tube's open late at night and you can take the tube all the way through the weekend, cool, amazing with some lines, you don't have any clubs that are open. And again, if folds are one place, you have to have them at least open in each area of London so that you can ease the pressure and attention that's been placed on London transport and that's been placed on cocktail bars and other clubs as well. So you can kind of spread it out a little bit. And also what that does, I think in my opinion, is that it kind of alleviates some of the issues that we have around antisocial behavior when it comes to drugs and alcohol. Because I've had a long suspicion, my long-held suspicion and belief is that, especially after having gone to places like Berlin and, you know, partied in one of the best cities for nightlife and clubbing culture in general, I feel like because we have such limited hours to drink, it kind of forces us to get really leery. And then by the time we go to a club, especially if you go to a smaller town, like one time I went to visit a friend in Hastings and it was a real kind of eye opener when I went there because the pubs would close before 12. So some pubs would close at 11.30, 11 p.m. So people would go there to try and get smashed and usually the pub landlords to get more money during the weekend would run special promo deals on shots or beers or whatever else drink they wanted to run a promo on. You'd get laced up with drinks in the pub and then you head out to a cocktail bar usually that opened until one whatever right because you want to get something a little bit more hard maybe a little bit more straight to the head and then from then you'd go to a nightclub i don't know what nightclub it was out there but there was some club we went to that was only open until four but by the time we went to a nightclub we have already been to two other drinking establishments and we were forced to drink within a four to five hour window very short time to neck those drinks back and by the time you hit that club you are steaming you are steaming 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 eyes pinging all over the place sweating profusely drunk smelling like an absolute bar you're a mess so clearly that would obviously, you know, not be the best condition to be in if you wanted to be on your best behavior. But if you have a 24 hour club, it lets people spread the night out a little bit, spread the drinking and the drug taking out a little bit. Like you see what happens in Berlin. People don't go too crazy. Even when I go there myself, I spend usually the first time that I, the, the first night that I land, I spend most of it just like, you know, seeing the sights, taking it all in, drinking some flipping um, malt beer, so, sorry, some malt drinks or whatnot, drinking some juices here and there, and then getting on the sauce later on in the night because there's a lot more time to go. But we don't have that because, you know, stuff is so constricted. It's annoying anyway we continue her hire in november 2016 was much celebrated at the time no it was not a complete lie no one celebrated it. everyone was kind of apprehensive when she got hired i think because the first part about it which was really annoying was that if i remember when they put the night czar announcement out it was an open application and i'm sure many people within nightlife who are really knowledgeable who have experience who have loads of really cool insights and fresh ideas, they probably submitted the application and none of them got picked. Essentially, they picked her. And if I'm not mistaken, she's a longtime Labour supporter and stuff. She's worked in politics before in some sort of level. So if anything, it was basically an inside hire, even though they opened it to everybody else, which is probably legally what they had to do. But they just basically hired somebody internally. So no one was excited for it, especially when you saw her. It's like, come on, what, is, what does she know about London nightlife? She's not even flipping from here. Obviously, she's a citizen but she's flipping american if i'm not mistaken um, yeah i think she's american i'm pretty sure even out canadian but she's definitely not you know whatever and then you're here and then you're like what her experience is what like putting on parties in camden and shit like come on man running a sh radio show no one listens to come on this is a nonsense anyway we continue with her role involving championing london's nightlife both in the uk and internationally including safeguarding venues across the city according to gla's own website however she has faced scrutiny during her tenure from time, sorry, within the industry, particularly as venues struggled during lockdowns and now the cost of living crisis affecting running costs. Yo, she was so quiet during the pandemic. She was so quiet. And again, none of it was her fault. She couldn't anticipate anything and she couldn't really have done much. But the lack of real insight, support, empathy, um, just speaking in general and dialogue was so shocking. She was so quiet. 
that really was a bad PR for her, to be honest. But hey, what can you do? Let's figures from the nighttime industry, the NTIA, um, dated from June 2022, showed a 37% fall in the number of nightclubs. So we had 346. Now we only have 221 since December 2016 when Lammy was a month into the job. God almighty. Uh, Michael Kill, the CEO of NTA, told Mixmag, in the current landscape where the industry is in crisis and the nighttime, in the, in the nighttime economy businesses and jobs are being lost across the country due to inflation, sorry, in the current landscape where the industry is in crisis and the nighttime economy businesses and jobs are being lost in the country due to inflationary price pressures, industrial in action and downturn in the trade due to consumers having less disposable income, it is inevitable if it is true that many will find this news extremely hard to accept. Of course, it's but anyone getting a pay rise in you know in, in the climate in at the moment is going to get scrutinized anybody just because people are hurting out there and to see people getting mad pay rises and bonuses you know working in industries where you know people maybe question what they actually do you're going to have a bit of a fit but for somebody who we definitely know for you know for because especially most of us who are really interested in, in electronic music and in nightlife in general we've been keeping a key now on what's been going especially if you're in the uk you've been keeping one eye open and what's been happening um you've seen all these clubs closing down you're seeing issues people having with licenses and whatnot and you're looking at this woman and you're thinking yourself like what do you actually do what is your actual job are you just like a waste of a hire are you stealing a living are you just you know um i don't know like are you a psyop like what the hell is going on here it continues. However, we know that the NTE, NTE advisors have hugely important roles to play in supporting the sector across the country, and as organisation will continue to campaign for these roles implemented in every major city across the UK. Political answer of Michael Kill, I don't, I, I don't, you know, I don't begrudge him. He is the CEO of the NTI. He can't go ham on her. So he basically saying, hey, we need more of these roles across the UK for sure. What would be good actually? is if we had more night stars across the UK. We have in Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, and I don't know, wherever else, Brighton, Bristol, think of anywhere else that has kind of good nightlife scenes and whatnot. And what will be good and interesting is if we get other night stars who do a demonstrably better job than her, and then we can compare and contrast. Because at the moment, there's no pressure really, because who are you comparing it to? Like the one that does in Amsterdam or something. Do you know what I mean? It's hard because we don't really understand the posters over there and we're not really paying attention. But if people at home base... If there's an example to show somebody is in a job for like only six months and they've implemented this, they push forward this, they're doing this, they're doing that, then it will definitely show how bad of a job that she's doing. But at the moment, there's no one really to compare her with. And because the industry is so messed up anyway, it's hard to really blame. It's hard to really pin all the blame on her because she can only do so much. But still, she doesn't try to do anything. Do you know what I mean? She's clearly like, you know, there's like, hey, you know, you know, you work in certain companies and you get into an issue and you think HR is meant to be there to help you, then you quickly realize, no, HR is there to protect the company from you, actually. That's how, what HR's kind of, you know, main sort of uh, um, person they're looking after is the company that actually hires them. But in your naive head sometimes when you're going through issues, you think, no, they're there to protect me. It's like, no, 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 no. You're just a cog in a machine. They want to protect the machine. So maybe that's what she's doing. She's clearly went in there and just, you know, she's kind of playing the role well and abided by everything, not really trying to ruffle any feathers and just really not doing a damn thing. Um, it continues. One much discussed part of Lammy's role has been the introduction of a night sur surgeries where she meets the Londoners to discuss their experiences in life in the capital. Absolute waste of time and absolute bullshit. But the Spectre reported that the GA's website only 27%, 27 previous surgeries have been listed since the beginning of November 2016. So don't even do that. An average of every two months, no surgeries have been reported since 2022, nearly 10 months ago. So these surgeries that she probably sold as some sort of big thing to kind of talk to real Londoners and get the real opinions on the street and whatnot, she hasn't done in 10 months. Stealing an absolute living. When asked about the seeming lack of night surgeries, a spokesperson told Mixmag, the night star speaks with businesses, organisations, boroughs and Londoners every single day. No, she doesn't. Between the hours of what? Uh, to, help the London, to help London thrive between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Lies. This includes regular meetings and roundtables of business groups, councils, and industry associations covering all aspects of the capital at night from the support uh from uh, sorry from support for the pub sector and music venues to safety transport policy and planning issues night surgeries are organized together with local authorities to meet residents and community groups businesses counselors night workers volunteers to hear their views and challenges that they're facing across aspects of london at night 
these surgeries are a small but important part of Amy's work and that is why she has organized more night surgery in 2022 than any previous year I like political talk she will continue to hold in-person and online surgeries that are part of her wider work to support the capital at night and deal with the pressure of facing industry following the impact of the pandemic and the cost of living crisis in July 2020 as clubs grew closed and pandemic restrictions the petition was launched to remove Lamy from her purse which gathered 1,000 signatures she has had her share of success with the GLA pointing out the launch of a women's night safety charter waste of time nighttime enterprise zones waste of time and scrapping the form 696 discriminatory risk assessment that require promotes to disclose efficiency of the artist okay that's pr pretty good um yeah her overall record has faced criticism from members of the nightlife community including producer um caris stockat who says sorry but what the fuck um does have amy lining down apart from safe venues that she personally djs at she's done absolutely f4 for the capital's nightlife and was absent during covid get rid Music journalists, okay, we don't care about the journalists. Um, the night is our job description that was independently reviewed to better reflect the responsibilities of the role as part of the restructure of the mail's office. The post has then graded using GLO's independent for the grade 13, grade 15. The night is is responsible for helping London's fry between 6 pm and 6 am. So I'm saying she hasn't let up thrive though. Where's the other clubs that are open between that time in London? Apart from flipping what fold, egg, fabric. I can't think of many others that are open like that. And again, we need them in each area of London. There needs to be one at least. There should be a fold in each part of London, a minimum of one. And it should be open 24 hours every single weekend. Simple as. There's no excuses. This includes advising the mayor, deputy mayors, and the mayor advisors of all areas of policies and planning, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, the, the story remains. I actually want to know. Can this lady ever be fired? Will we ever be rid of her or is she going to be here forever and ever and ever? Is her role intrinsically tied to Sadiq Khan's mayorship? Can she be voted out? When will the next round of Night's Eye elections go place? Can we put a different criteria in place and maybe objectives in mind when they hire the next person? Because, you know, for all the ills that she's doing, it is pretty nang. It is pretty cool to be able to make 83,000 to 100 pounds doing absolute jack shit, right? Doing a radio show no one listens to partaking in crappy meetings that no one probably turns up at where you probably get to comp and expense everything that you eat um traveling on the comp traveling on the you know on taxpayers dime and all that sort of nonsense and living a good life and pretending you're helping these venues when you're clearly not and putting out crappy press releases and whatever it may be when people question everything you have to say absolute dog shit hate everything about her hope she gets fired hope she we lose her in some way shape or form but i also can't hate the game of her being able to finesse a situation given the you know the the current situation we're in the economy finesse away but you are hurting me and i'm pissed off because it's hurting the things that i'm interested in but i don't hate the hustle i cannot hate the hustle it's impossible to hate the hustle because she's absolutely caking while doing absolutely nothing crazy isn't it